Check, mic check, check one, two, malt boxes, mic level, check, check one, two, mic level, coming out of malt box, line level for XL level in the back. Check, check. Are you good? afternoon's uh, press conference. This is a very rare thing for me to do, but we have some uh, drastic steps that we are taking and we want to make sure we get that information out there. Um, so good afternoon. Today I'm announcing the filing of an administrative action against CVS Caremark for alleged violations of the Patient's Right to Pharmacy Choice Act. The Oklahoma Insurance Department uh, is seeking to censure, suspend, place on probation, or revoke the PBM, Pharmacy Benefit Manager, license of CVS Caremark for the practice of steering patients to their pharmacies and prescription mail order services. The order was filed on Friday uh, and notice was mailed to CVS that same day. We spent considerable time over the past couple of years building this new regulatory program after the law passed in 2019. We've invested department resources, hired new staff, and have negotiated multiple settlements uh, exceeding over three and a half million dollars in fines and returning over $700,000 to local independent pharmacies. However, CVS Caremark has committed the same alleged violation that we have already addressed a second time. We try very hard to work with licensees while administering our PBM laws, but when it becomes apparent a licensee would rather play games than follow our state statutes and regulations, we have to hold them accountable. Therefore, I believe it's important to initiate this administrative action. In addition, we have a serious issue affecting many Oklahomans who can't fill a 90-day prescription or use mail order pharmacies because of a very impactful business decision that CVS Caremark has made to restrict pharmacy choice conditions. And I might just add that there is nothing in our laws or our rules that uh, do not allow for 90-day prescription. 90-day prescriptions in mail order is allowed. CVS has made a business decision for these certain groups to not uh, allow for that. So that's my uh, statement. I'm happy to take any questions uh, that you might have. Commissioner, I'm Carmen, I work for the Global World. Um, what, I mean, you say filing an administrative action. What does that mean? Is that something that's filed with the courts? Is that something that's filed with the state? You know, just explain for people who don't understand, like myself. Sure, sure. So, uh, in order for us to take that action, we have to file, we have to give them time for due process. So, uh, the next step would be, we have a hearing scheduled on May 25th. So, that would be the next step in front of an administrative law judge. So the time frame there, it's not immediate action. We need to allow, so they will then hear from us and they will hear from CVS Caremark, the judge will, and then they will render a decision uh, at that point. Um, just for clarity's sake, you said CVS Caremark has committed the same violation a second time. Remind our audiences what that first violation was. Yeah, so, uh, and I say that because we've had no other situation where PBM has violated a, something we have disciplined them for a second time. At least at this stage, we've not had any evidence of that other than CVS Caremark. And, it, and their violation is steering consumers to their pharmacy, their mail order service only. The law that was passed in 2019 says that you can't do that. That, you know, that needs to be available to, the, the, the act is called the Patient Pharmacy Choice Act. The goal being giving uh, patients choice of what pharmacy they get their prescriptions from. And so that's their violation, is that steerage. So, um, another question, if they, um, if they listen to the press conference today and if CVS Caremark stops doing that, stops steering its patients to its pharmacy, um, in theory, could that make this whole thing go away or would the, the administrative action still proceed? Well, the administrative action will go forward. Um, would, it appears that they have stopped that. They have sent out letters uh, the problem is, what the letters have stated is that uh, consumers in those certain groups, not everyone in Oklahoma that uses CVS Caremark, but in those certain groups, they can only get 30-day prescriptions. That's that's very consumer unfriendly. Many folks enjoy being able to get a 90-day prescription as opposed to a 30-day prescription. Uh, 
and there's some savings potentially involved there for them. Uh, and they are they're taking the position saying they cannot fix that till sometime next year. I, I find that hard to believe, but uh, that, that's the situation. They are, they've stopped doing that, but they've told folks they can only get 30 days. A consumer um, sent me a message, an email as late as Thursday, where they were still being told that CVS was saying because of state law that they could not fulfill this action. Were you aware of any kind of timeline on their end of communication and backtracking to make sure the right information was shared? Yeah, so, so they sent out a communication, or, or their, their clients did, their employer clients, I believe it was February 23rd, that had misinformation in it. We issued a press release at that time. Uh, to try to clarify that, uh, and then we uh, required CVS to communicate to everyone, which they have done, but that's the one that was just saying 30 days uh, only. Um, so if, if there's uh, evidence out there right now that they're still doing that steerage, we'd sure like to see it. What is the most important thing that Oklahoma consumers need to know after today? I, I think they need to know that uh, in spite of what they may be hearing, there's nothing in the law that says you cannot do a 90-day prescription. There's nothing that the insurance commissioner is doing to restrict a 90-day prescription. 90-day prescriptions are being done through all kinds of other PBMs, through all kinds of other employer groups. CBS Caremark has taken this position with a limited number of their clients, but they're large national clients with headquarters outside of our state uh, to say that they cannot do 90-day prescriptions, they can't administer that at this time. Consumers need to, we would highly encourage them to talk to their employer. They are the ones that have a contract with CBS Caremark. And, and those CVS Caremark needs to hear from those employers that this does not work for us. We need a 90 day option for our employees and it should be available at any pharmacy of their choice. So if CVS Caremark had already stopped steering its patients to its PBM, its pharmacies, why take the administrative action now? They kind of already stopped that. Well, two, two things I think that have happened. Number one, it was their second violation. Um, and again, we've not experienced that yet with any other PBM uh, once they've been corrected and disciplined. And then I think the second part of that is the amount of misinformation, as we just heard from the question here, uh, misinformation that is getting out there. And uh, that is addressed in the law too, that PBMs cannot be providing misinformation or deceptive information out there to consumers and confuse in the marketplace. And that's exactly what's happening. So before the um, hearing in May, do you, do you all just file kind of like briefs, just like you would in the court case, if you file briefs, they file briefs, they make their case, and then you just go before the administrative law judge, they make a decision, then what happens? Yes, and, and depending on what that decision is, I mean, if the decision is made to revoke or suspend their license, we stand ready to help those consumers and companies that are impacted by that to, to, to uh, help address that. But that's exactly the way that will play out. Yeah. Do you know how many um, patients CVS Caremark serves? In the great, family? great question. We we don't know. These these are these are self-insured clients. Mm -hmm. So these are your large companies that have uh, employees in Oklahoma. We don't regulate self-insured plans or ERISA plans. Uh, those are regulated federally, except for this PBM piece. The courts have made uh, the decision that uh, indeed it does it is impacted in those plans uh, with state law. And so we don't have record if this was fully insured. Um, companies, we can pull those records and tell you exactly how many people that impacts, but in this scenario, we, we don't know that. But think of large employers uh, that have Oklahoma uh, employees, not that all of them in CVS Caremark, but, but a few of them are. Is this the first time that CVS Caremark has had a uh, any type of violation with the insurance department or any settlement, or have they had previous? No, we, we have settled, uh, and, and that's to your, to your question here about why now, it's the second occurrence. We have fined them literally millions of dollars, and that seems to not be getting their attention. Uh, it is a pretty drastic step, but I'm not sure what else to do uh, to get their attention when millions of dollars of fines are not getting their attention. Do you know what CBS is seeing in that law, I guess, that they say is preventing them from filling the 90 days. No, no, they're not seeing anything in the law that uh, prevents that. What they tell me is their systems are not able to do that. And so for them to change their systems to allow that for these clients, because of the program that had been in place, uh, they won't be able to get to that till next year. They're a multi-billion dollar company. I find that hard to believe.
Any other questions? Okay. And thank you all for being out. I really do appreciate it for coming out today. We can answer any questions afterwards. Please feel free to reach out. Liz Eagle right here is our head of communications. Happy to have you in the room. Thank you.